This video is going to demonstrate the function and usefulness of my Excel attendance spreadsheet. This is using a now function to generate a timestamp. The idea of this is that I should be able to type in a number or I should be able to scan it from a barcode and it should then turn up with a name and give a time related to that. That's based on my system clock down here as to when I'm doing this and it's going to then work in my class to be able to calculate the time that I am late well this is based on an 8.30 in the morning and how many classes I've attended so we're going to have a look at how this actually would work in operation how we can set it up and uh, the usefulness of this. Now there are a number of features that come with this. We have a number of students that are actually signed in. We'll be able to see that there. We're going to be able to see the class size when we've entered a class list. We're going to have a date turning up that's going to show us the day that this particular attendance was taken. We're going to have a start time that we can set and we're going to also have an indication of the number of classes that have been held so far and that will relate to the overall attendance that the student has had because down in here we're going to be able to calculate the lateness and also we're going to be able to calculate whether the students have missed a number of classes. We'll get that as a percentage. In addition, we can mark whether the student has left and we can get a timeout, and we can also have comments. Now, this is based on using a class master, which we're going to be entering some ID numbers in here, and we'll get a series of entries over in these columns over here, and then we'll get a graphical representation of the attendance. Let's just come back and uh, scroll down a little bit down the bottom here. We see we've got a start time for the A set and a start time for the B set. Basically I'm working on 15 weeks with two classes per week, so I've got an A time and a B time. You can set these however you like. This is my example that I'm just showing you. And I've got uh, one class starting at 8.30 and one class starting at 11.10. So if I change this value here, it will change for all of the A sets that I have over here. So it's showing my time there at uh, 8.30 and in the B set it's showing the start time as 11.10. So it's carrying those through for me. Okay, so what we need to do is we need to get a set of names and we're going to do that with ID numbers. So when a student comes in we can barcode scan their uh, ID number if we've got that system or just type in the number but that has to be based on a school list or a can be just a, a single, single class list but it's e much better if we have actually the, the whole of our institution uh, all the names put in so we have a class name list I should say we have a name list over here in which we're going to have the ID number and the actual name now, I've abbreviated these ones here for privacy reasons um, and I've also got a barcode number over here this is the same ID number but I've uh, put it within a pair of uh, asterisks so it's easier to print a barcode using a barcode font so I can generate um, barcodes to be able to give to the students put them on their workbooks or ID cards or something like that so what you're going to need is a set of names should be pretty easy with their uh, ID number, a unique ID number. These numbers and names do not have to be in numerical order. They can be in any order. As you can see, we've got uh, two sets of numbers that have been used, two formulas that were used for the numbers, uh, which made life a bit confusing, but we changed from this uh, four-digit number three or four digit number into having the 14 here which was representing uh, a year of entry into our particular institution so um, it doesn't really matter as long as we've got a unique number with our name now when we come back over to our class list back here at the class master all we need to do is enter in the ID number and it will go away and find using a calculation from the name list at the end, so it's going to look up using VLOOKUP the name list, it'll find the value that we want of the person. So here we go, I've got a list of IDs that I'm going to copy. I've got 20 of those, so I'll just copy those from here. 
and I'm going to paste those 20 into here and we'll go control V and paste those in and it's gone away and found the values that I need now the reason I'm using a class master list over here is that then gives me something to work on in terms of when I put a name in over here now I'm going to put in uh, one of the students that I know was listed there and so she's now appeared here I've got the time that I've entered it and uh, this is how late it is compared to that 8.30 in the morning well since uh, we're working uh, at a different time I might come back and change my time here to uh, 2030 well 2020 actually will do and we'll go enter there we'll come back to class A and you can see now that she's come in one minute late if I instead had uh, the time set here as 2030 she's actually come in on time she's come in before so it's just making a quick calculation it's determining whether this time that has been stamped for the entry is on time compared to the time that's listed up here now I could manually change the time up here if I so desired if it's a, a different start time from the normal times I can come and manually change it up over there that would be one way of doing it but um, uh, usually we'll let the computer calculate it for us based on the regular class time but if there's some reason why you would uh, expect a class to be one class in particular to be starting later than another one you could manually put the time in up there I'm just going to undo that one okay so we've got our times there now uh, the other thing that you'll notice is that she's been present for a hundred percent of the classes because we're in here that we've got 20 students in our class and so far there is only one here another thing that's happened is we've actually got a date that has appeared up over here which is today's day uh, or date and it is using that as part of my calculation here to be able to determine whether the person is late or on time if I remove this number actually before I remove it, if I change this number to a different one, let's go for another student so you'll notice that the time is not going to change here so to be able to get my time to change here I first need to delete the time and then I can put it in and that would create a new time stamp for that particular student so that's brought in the correct time now so if you're wanting to replace one if you've done it very quickly then that would be okay otherwise you have to delete the student first and let's put in another student here right so I've got my two students or oh, well, let's have a third one if I remember I had 20 students in my class size I've now got three students here that's great but who's missing well if I scroll down I find I've got the list of all the students that uh, we we're expecting to have come and I can see I've got a couple missing here and that's because they are now listed up over here okay so uh, it's just a, a nice simple system let's um, pick up the student here and we'll see how she disappears so when I press enter Hanifar has come here and she's disappeared from down the bottom here so I have a quick checklist of who's not here as well as seeing who is here the time that they arrived and how late they were compared to the start time that I was expecting them to be coming in at also as I said they're currently at 100% because they've all been present for this first class now if we come back to the class master you'll see that uh, their names are uh, appearing over here and I've got a one indicating that they are actually in this class I can see my class size up here and if I scroll across you'll see that we've got an attendance register over here so I can see they've attended one so far these other ones are, are zero at the moment so I get a visual uh, 
graph of how many classes, this is how many classes have actually been held and this is how many classes are, um, they've attended so far. Now if I miss a class that doesn't matter, it will uh, quite happily uh, calculate the number of classes based on the number of classes that actually took place rather than uh, it just necessarily uh, adding them up. So if I don't have uh, somebody in for if I don't have a class uh, on this particular day and I go straight into class uh, 2A so I've jumped into that week let's put in another student here one that we've already had uh, actually she's the yep so she was in this first week as well Fatima from there and I've got her over here so we can see we've had now held two classes even though B is uh, nobody and uh, no class was actually held so um, she's sitting at a hundred percent but when I come back to these you can see they've now dropped they're only sitting at 50 percent because it's doing a, a, an ongoing calculation to see what's happening over here and if I come back to my class master you can see that we've had two classes and she's been uh, attending for two these two have attended for one and the rest are all sitting on zero at the moment. So I've got a good visual indication as to what's going on for my students. I enter the ID, I get their name, I find out the time that they arrived, how late they may have been, I can quickly see whether they've been missing some classes or not. If I need to, I can indicate the time that they left a class and I could even type some comments over here if I wish. So I find this a very useful way of determining who's in my classes, uh, keeping it as a record. Uh, I always use a barcode scanner. I give all my students a barcode which I stick onto one of their books and they bring their book to class and I scan the book. If they've forgotten the book, I can chastise them and type in the number. Either way, it works as long as I get the ID number here and then I can see exactly when they were present or not. So I hope you'll um, find this a useful program. It's available for you to download if you would like. There's a link for that. And the way of creating those uh, kind of uh, cells is available in my YouTube channel videos. If you go through and have a look, you'll see how to create each of those. And you'll see over here, I've actually got a, a list of the main formula that I've been using. But if you download the template, this exact same file you can have without the class list and without the name list in it of course but uh, you'll be able to go through and debug each of the formula that's been used.